everybody. Bye. Okay. <laughs> My name is T. Bro, what's your name? My name is Lizzie. What? Lizzie. My name is Lizzie. Okay. And this is Club Culture. Her. This is our podcast. Her. Um, we started this podcast. This is our first episode. So thank you if you if you're watching. <laughs> what? I'm going to spill the beans, but we'll spill them later. What's the beans? You. What? A- this is the first episode. <laughs> Back up. Back up. <laughs> Niggas don't need you to be that close. Whatever. Come on. It's the first Man, episode. Man, this is the first official episode. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> we sure. had some technical difficulties <laughs> to get here, but we here, so that's the only thing that matters. Okay. Why are you trying to focus on the negatives? Our no, thing no, is no, to focus no, on no, the positives. No, 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 no. So yes, this is Club Culture. We uh, this is a, is a podcast that's supposed to be for everybody: race, yeah. age, gender, sex, nationality, whatever you are. We would like to feel as if we're creating a safe space for anybody to be here and feel connected. The real theme and mission of the podcast is to take a good look at social media and try to turn it into a positive realm, but in the virtual wor- world, which is will be our podcast. Yeah. So we'll have a bunch of conversations online, on the podcast, in the comment sections, on all our social media and video form, just to have everybody feel as if we're connected like we are on social media. And so it's really just to talk about how influential and, and how powerful the this thing called social media is, but in a podcast. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, let's get right into it. You want to talk about how we met or? I mean, sure. How, how I meet We're going to give y'all a brief rundown. I met her at Dominican. Dominican University. Do not go there. DU Nation. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, but I met her at Dominican. Uh, uh, what was it? My sophomore year? Your sophomore year. I was a junior. Okay. She's a little older than me. A lot older than me. Oh, heck. Um. <sighs> But yeah, but yeah, I'm, we met my sophomore year, her junior year, and then we became like real close. My junior year, her senior year, mm-hmm. and so I would like to say we we came close. We became close my really. F- year? Yeah, at the end of it, I would like to say. I'm trying but to if you think it was so- my oh, senior year, let me tell you something. I don't remember sophomore year. That was pretty traumatizing, but. We ain't gonna get into that. But we here. We are. I w- how would you describe me? I'm gonna describe you. Girl. I don't even wanna describe her. No, but <laughs> for real though, um, she cool. She 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 know a little something. She know a little something. She thinks she know a lot of something. No, she do know a lot of something though. She is very intellectual kind of why'd you have to do that with your hands kind of your- intelligent you know what i'm saying she got at least i got maybe three and a half brain cells she got like four brain cells so it's like it work out well you know what i'm saying i'm a little goofy her than her so it kind of you think so absolutely okay. you think i'm not goofier than you i think that i'm probably goofier than you girl please. but i be just too serious sometimes okay well, I'm the funny one. She not. So oh, that's a lie. That's a lie. Anyway, they they gonna figure it out. She, I think if I have to, if somebody said describe somebody in three words, I would say hardworking, bald head hoe. Okay, that's actually a phrase. That's not a word. Okay, hardworking is a phrase too. Okay, I guess I'm not using words. Uh, you need one more. Just get it off. Okay, hardworking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still at the ball head. Oh, I would say, I would say a, a good time for sure. A good time, a good time. Intelligent, a good time. Probably a friend you need. You know how you know how like a balance of friends makes a good friendship. She's probably a friend you need. Lizzie is my least favorite friend. She's lying. I'm her favorite friend. <sighs> she is my favorite. Yeah, That's my puka wuka. Uh, Lizzie is very sweet. Wooka wooka. Are you serious? Because anyway. you look like a little teddy bear. Okay, I'm sweet and what else? You sweet. You are very sweet. Mm-hmm. You are very uh, outspoken. Because mm-hmm. who's going to check me? And you are, I would say, the friend that I know that I can come to and they're going to give me 
uh, the perspective I need to hear and not the perspective I want to hear. Period. Gotta so you're going to keep it straight with me. Got to keep it real. But yeah. Period. Okay. Now let's get to the real shit now that we introduced ourselves. Period. It was a bunch of music that dropped uh, within the, the last week. A lot. Like almost overwhelming a lot. Would you say it was a good week of music? Uh, would I say it's a good week? Mm, let me say this. It was a good week in the sense that we got some stuff that we normally don't get. Okay. But I ain't add nothing to the playlist. So You ain't add nothing? I didn't add nothing to the playlist. Dang. Not saying that anything that was... Well, I, I take that back. I did add Chloe to the playlist. Okay. I added Chloe to the playlist. Shout out to Chloe, baby. I added Chloe to the playlist. Uh-huh. But as far as albums and singles from Beyonce and Drake. No. I didn't. Not even one song. He put. A, he gave us 13 tracks. You ain't get one. I didn't. I mean, I liked one of them. But I didn't. Add it. I liked what it's called. Tie-in bond, bonds of something like that. It's called tie-in. It's on the album. Uh, Drake's. Tie-in binds. I think it's called, yeah, on Drake's album. Let me go to the track list. Uh, tie that binds. Okay, there we go. Tie that bind. I like that one because it was like uh, a lot of music, like uh, um, instruments and stuff in it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, I didn't add no, would I go back and play it again? I probably would. Mm-hmm. I probably would. Like if I was in the car and I want some upbeat, you know, ooh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would go play it again. But like, did I add it to the playlist? No, because I don't listen to that kind of music every day. Okay, so I'm going to ask you questions. Because what y'all will learn is that Lizzie is a consumer uh, of things. And so she's, she's going to give a lot of pro, uh, perspectives of a cons- from a consumer. And I'm more of like the te- technical mind because I am heavily into music, right. sports, and entertainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what? how would you... So this is a dance album. Right. This is not Drake's typical. Correct. And so if you had to rate it based off of other dance music that you know of, how would you rate it a uh, scale out of 10 comp- just based solely off of what you know dance music is to be? Well, okay. Drake gave me a mixture of like house music and EDM. Mm-hmm. And I think it's funny that he released it during Pride Month. I ain't gonna lie. Yes. We're gonna think, get to that. I think, he, had, I think <laughs> he knew what he was trying to do. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, because that, that type of music you know, is definitely for the gays and the girls. Uh-huh. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So I think Dre knew what he was, uh, Drake knew what he was doing. Uh-huh. Um, does it make me want to dance? For sure. Okay. It makes me want to dance. Okay. So you wouldn't, if you were to walk inside of a club or bar and this came on, you wouldn't feel like turn this shit off. No, no, no. Especially, okay. I mean, I mean, it might be a little different cause you know, I'm Chicago born and raised. And so we was, Born and raised around like house music, yes, and stuff like that. Yes. So maybe like from my perspective, as somebody that wasn't raised around that kind of music, it would probably be like, man, turn it off. Now I will say, I think people don't appreciate the creativity aspect of being an artist. Yes. Like, because everybody was like, oh, this shit suck. I hate this. What is this? Drake is lame as hell for this. Like, turn it off. And I think what people fail to realize is that as an artist you have the ability to release or do whatever the hell you want to do. That's yeah. what makes you an artist. Yeah. If he didn't put this out, it, we would get the same old Drake, like all the time. Uh-huh. Like, it would be the same consistent stuff. So yeah. like, I appreciate it. It's something different. Something new. Ain't nobody out here doing this. Uh-huh. Yeah, Beyonce came out and released a single afterwards, but maybe they <laughs> came together and said the powers that be. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, if I had to, Rate it, like, as far as dance music on a scale from 1 to 10. If I heard this in a club, I'm going to dance. I feel like I would give it, like, if I'm <laughs> a few drinks and I'm in a club and I'm dancing, I'm going to dance. I feel like I would give it, like, an 8, an 8 out of 10 for dance music for sure. Wow. I did not expect for you to give it this, this, uh, that high of a, of a number. I expected you to come on this motherfucker and be like, that shit was not good. I did not enjoy no, it at no, all. No. You, I mean, like, I, like, I'm not a Drake fan. Let's, yeah. let's just be clear. 
I like Drake's music, but I am not a diehard Drake fan. I am not a rap fan. So, like, for Drake to give us something different, it was just like, okay, that's cool. I like that. I can I can get jiggy with that. Like, that's cool. Like, And I didn't see nothing wrong with the music that he released. I didn't think it was bad music. Uh-huh. I just think it's different from what people are used to. Uh-huh. And so, some, so many times people are in, like, these binding label, like, record deals and stuff like that where the record label will only let them release certain types of music. Yeah. And then when they finally get out of those bad deals, they start creating the stuff that they really been wanting to create. Mm-hmm. And it either goes really, really good or it goes really, really bad because people don't like it. Yeah. But like, I liked Drake's album. It was, it was cool. I mean, it was cool. It was different, but it was cool. What did you think of it? <clears throat> so on my first listen, I was with social media. Right. The masses, they all think it's trash. Uh-huh. Oomps, oomps. <laughs> music <laughs> I, EDM is hard to listen to for sure yes yeah. but I personally am a lover of music so I always think that he gave us an album instead of just singles mm-hmm. and so you are supposed to give the album more than one listen and right. and then you're supposed to do it in different mediums and or environments and so I listen to it in the crib on the TV while I'm cleaning up on my first listen I'm like yeah this ain't it and then I listened in the car. And, you know, everything hit different in the car. So I was listening. I'm like, yeah, this is how it's supposed to sound. Uh, right. And so it's I, I definitely think it's nighttime music uh, in, at, at clubs, but it's particular clubs. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I want to hear this being played when we go to the black clubs in Chicago. Right. Don't play that shit. Right. <laughs> play that shit when we go to Boys Town. Right, 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 right. This right. definitely is for the gays. Uh, and the girls right. play that shit when we out there with the white people in Boys Town, right. cause then they 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 gonna they gonna eat this shit up for eat sure. It up for sure. Now, back to back. If I had to give it a critique, mm-hmm. I would say that I personally, I appreciate that he gave us something different, and, and he gave us it at a, at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. But he also gave us too much of it being Drake. Uh, I feel as if the songs sound as if it were hip hop Drake, uh, R&B hip hop Drake lyrics, and he just put it against dance uh, beats. The dance beats weren't too much screaming dance. I still feel as if it was his uh, his uh, like normal producers mm-hmm. sound, and they just try to give it some type of dance influence. But I definitely feel as if the production could have been better. Yeah. Knowing the the producers he works with, they are so good, and they know Drake so much. His sound, I feel like they didn't compliment it as, but at the best ability as they could have. It's not that it was trash. I definitely think that it could have been much better. And the lyric content, dance music yeah. is minimum with lyrics. Right, right, right. Literally, he gave us a lot more mm-hmm. than I needed for dance, mm-hmm. and he gave us stuff where it was about breakups. It was about. Mm-hmm. Love of, over the oomph oomph. Yes, over <laughs> over the oomph oomph shit. And uh, so I personally did not like the lyric, the content behind it. Uh, right place, wrong time. Maybe I don't know. Right. Type of scenario with the lyrics. Right. Uh, I think he could have saved some of this shit for his uh, original sound, which is hip hop R and B, and not this dance shit. If he was gonna do dance and tap into that shit, then really take your time and really learn what yeah. dance music is. Give it your own flair, but still keep it dance so that it makes sense. Uh, That lyric shit, it didn't make sense for me. Uh, It it, it didn't. But he gave us a bunch of captions and shit to put on our photos. You think he was trying to play into, like, the uh, the TikTok dance movement? I think he's always trying to play into the streaming game. Uh, I think Drake is very strategic, and, and he's good at it. But me, because I'm a Scorpio as well, I look past all of the games and schemes. Libra game. Uh, f- that's fine, but he's a Scorpio, and so I feel as if we're Libra connected. Gang. And so I be trying to think of, hmm, why did you do this? I see why you did it. But I'm I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on the actual content you gave me past the schemes and the uh, the strategy. Right. I-, I didn't like the, lyric- the lyrical content. <clears throat> um, and I also, the one song on there that he had, uh... Uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, it's pussy. It's calling my name. That shit. I love that. Uh, that's the house music to me, mm-hmm. where it has that minimal lyric, but it repeats, and you just vibe into. You're just dancing to just right. that. <laughs> that. That is the one song that I can't say was 
dance, mm-hmm. uh, white people dance, EDM dance, right. uh, EDM house music. That's what I was getting right. from that song. But I would have respected it much more if it came from a Tiana Taylor or somebody that is, uh, has been loud and proud and open about their, uh, uh, their alliance to the LGBTQ plus community. House right. music is not theirs. Right. House music is black music. Right. But we know who, wh- where that music is played most of the time right. in modern world today. Yeah. The house music that's played at the black cookouts are not what Drake right. album was. Right. It's more so what Beyonce single was. Right. <clears throat> and so if you finna make up, give us 13 tracks of this shit, did I need for you to off bat be a Tiana Taylor or somebody? Cause you know, there, cause he's finna profit so much off of this project. Yeah. And I don't personally, I would like for that to be for somebody who's always been an ally for that community, for that, um, for that dance. Cause it's just like Kanye putting out, uh, uh, gospel, yeah. how he's winning Grammys and, and winning mm-hmm. these awards in that category. But so much more of gospel singers don't get that recognition. So you're yeah. finna profit so much off of what people are trying to survive off of. Yeah. But Kanye also off bat has been loud and proud about his religion, how close Maybe. he has been to God. No, coming into the game, he's always been like you that. You think so? Yes. Uh, Jesus walks come yeah, now. I mean, yeah. He's but always like, been like that. Okay, he he released that, but like I don't he's know. released more I than just that, I don't but know. like, I feel like this is this this is a conversation for another day. I'm Kanye, not thrown off that Kanye gave us a gospel album. I'm thrown off that Dre gave us a dance album, but I'm not too thrown off because he's gave us island pop. He's gave us these right. dancing songs, but not EDM house dance. Right. But yeah, that that's just my that's my only uh, review about this the shit. I do like the project. It's cool. It's not great. Now compared to Beyonce's single. Now, I think the Beehive got special powers and people just don't want to come for the Beehive. Because uh-huh. that same tracks uh-huh. album that Drake put out was the same shit Beyonce gave us. Yeah. And media took it way better than Drake's album. Mm-hmm. It was literally the, the same thing, Samaya. Okay. I'm sorry, T. Ray. It was literally the same thing. <laughs> It was literally the same thing. Like, and people were just like, oh, um, Beyonce, oh my God, the queen, she released, she released, oh my God, the queen is coming back, oh my God, oh my God. And like, okay, it was the same, like, EDM house vibe that Drake gave us. Really? And nobody really... I feel like Drake was shitting on and Beyonce was praised for the Mm. same thing. Like it just, it didn't really sit well with me, but I'm like, I don't know if it's because it's B, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? B always get recognized for everything she do. She always get her flowers. Her fans always go crazy for Beyonce could release a track. And the only thing she'll say is it's Beyonce bitches. And they're going to be, oh, my God, oh, my God, Beyonce, oh, she's the shit, oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, all she said was it was Beyonce, bitches. Like, but they going to go fucking nuts over that. I mean, the same with Michael Jackson. Dude would come out on stage and niggas falling out. Michael Jackson was really good, though. She's really good, too. She just say Michael Jackson uh, good. <clears throat> And good is an understatement. Beyonce is great. I think Beyonce is a great performer, but I think there are plenty of female artists that can outsing Beyonce. Okay, but can they outperform that lady? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely and so not. you have to bring everything together holistically. She is one of the our greatest uh, vocalists of today. Our greatest, if not the greatest performer. I think she's the greatest performer I think of she's today. A very great performer. I can't take that away from her. Uh, and she gives us quality music the content of her music her catalog is still good mm. i'm not gonna say it's great but it's good mm. uh, the song is what we supposed to be talking about the song you won't break my soul yeah. you won't break my soul okay you won't break my soul so you know do you think that she gave us what we know is to be house music um yeah she gave she definitely gave house music vibes i'm yes. sure um, this, I think this is something a little new for, for Beyonce too. Mm-hmm. Like I've mm-hmm. never really heard this sound from her either. Yeah. Um, Beyonce, you know, she normally got the upbeat shit anyway, but like this type of upbeat, yeah. nah, I haven't heard this from B. So I don't know if they back the 
getting the shit together with everybody and they finna all release some house music EDM type. Uh huh. But it's cool. Oh, okay. But um Yeah, so hopefully they I don't know. Beyonce Beyonce, it was just cool. Just wipe though. your finger across it. Across the mouse pad. It's see it's still no, going. Okay. <laughs> Lizzie was scared. It is time. I want to make sure. But thank you, Jazz. Thank you. We appreciate you. Just so you know, it's gonna still keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, Beyonce, I mean it's new for Beyonce too, so I don't know. Maybe we get in a new wave, which we need. I feel like we need a little switch up. I'm mm-hmm. tired of the same bang bang, shoot them up, mm-hmm. pussy on his dick. Like I'm tired of it. So can we get some can we get something else? <sighs> I feel like we need this though. After a pandemic, like uh-huh. we need a little bit of uplift. We need a, a little bit of refreshing. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm tired of listening to Bang Bang Shoot 'em Up. I can go outside on the street and listen to that. Now, social media definitely ate up Drake. And they then when Beyonce up. came, they did not eat her up. But they did. Th- 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 I did see loyal Beyonce fans questioning it. Mm-hmm. They also didn't want this shit from her either. They wanted the typical uh, what they gon- what they thought they would get from Beyonce. And so they did say stuff, but they didn't go crazy like they went crazy on Drake. And that just goes to show how the legendary, the, how much of an icon Beyonce is to where people don't want to ridicule you as much as other artists. And now, so I wonder what it would be like if Beyonce released first. And then Drake I agree. Released. I agree. Because I feel like Drake wouldn't have got ate up as much as he did. He might have not have gotten gotten ate up as he did, but I don't know if people would have cared about the project as much. Cause they would have been comparing since we got B first then his, since we got his first. Cause I personally do think her one single is better than his whole project. Oh, damn. <laughs> Not that's, be- and that's, that's bogus. <laughs> <laughs> no. And that's just because she actually gave us what I think house music is. Mm. And it sound like black house music, right. black house music is better than EDM house music. Drake house, uh, that, that dance project he gave us, it was just missing some authenticity. Okay. Uh, I Beyonce's, I wouldn't say it was fully authentic, but it was more uh, closer to being authentic house music that I, we grew up on than not. And she did sample, uh, some shit in there that I, I feel like I recognized that were, was from a black, uh, artist. Big freedom. Uh, she had Big Frida a uh, voice in it, I think maybe, mm. but I think it was an actual oh, like a, song. I can't, okay. I can't pin, pin, I can't pinpoint pinpoint it, but I feel like I heard things in there that I, I've heard before in the past. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I think Beyonce single was smooth. Uh, I hope that's not going to be an entire dance project. Like Drake gave yeah. us the project and he threw it out there and let us know like, huh. And I I appreciated that. Honestly, he never let us. Mind. I wouldn't have named it that. It, he get he rolled it out as if it was gonna be typical Drake, and then it turned out to be a dance. And I don't know if Honestly, that was strategic or mind. not. Yeah, the cover art, all of that stuff. It looked like tip the. It, it looked like, like a cohesive project. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, never mind. You would name a dance album. No, I wouldn't name it that, but I don't know. I just don't think he fully like maybe he he was traveling a lot and been around a bunch of dance and stuff and so that's what's been coming out of him, but uh, maybe he didn't think too far into the whole art, c- the creative direction of the project and just wanted to give us what he's been making because that's what he's been listening to for a, a lot, that, and that's fine. Good, we finna move on from the, these two and go to uh Chloe's single because I watched the video this morning. As well. If I be good to you, mm-hmm, I will be good to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she said, hey, you. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I fucked with Chloe and Hallie. I, I, they go way back. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I know them personally because I used to watch them on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They had their little channel and stuff. Uh-huh. And they was getting a little groovy and a little groovy. You know what I'm saying? They was real good. And I'm. I'm happy to see them blow up, you know, the way they is, but... Her third solo single, what you think about this third one? I love it. Do you, I love it. Compared to the other two. Um, What's the other two? Uh, uh, uh... Booty so big. That one, and Lord, then the second mercy. one. Ah, oh, the second one. How does it go, bro? What's the second? Um, she, uh, uh, she was... It was dancey-ish, too. Let me, let me try to get... What is it called? Treat Me. How's that go? 
Treat me like a cheat me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. She been giving us a, a hit. She been giving us hits a little bit. Really? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like, you know, I like them. I like them other two. I like them other okay. two, too. Um, I feel like Booty was, is it called Booty? I think it's called Booty. Mm, okay, Flash, you're like, have mercy. Oh, you're right. We gonna call it Booty, a.k.a. Have mercy. <laughs> because she, she been giving us a lot of booty. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. <laughs> but no, for real though, I feel like Chloe been doing, I feel like Chloe been doing good. Like, mm-hmm. especially, you know, since everybody was trying to give, you know, give her and her sister Hallie the, uh, the whole, you know, Beyonce bullshit, like saying like, oh, y'all just like be like mm. Beyonce training y'all to be like her. Like, I don't, I don't see that being the case at all. Honestly, I feel like they're their own entity. Mm-hmm. Well, I like them, like, like them to do more stuff together. Yeah. Cause that's how I, you know, came mm. about them. Like, mm-hmm. They was a, a unit, but I think Chloe is doing pretty good. I think she's doing pretty good. And I like this surprise track. I ain't gonna lie. I like it. I think it's her best one. Out the out uh, out of all three of them, it's the most R and B. I want to hear panties, ten, uh, songs die. that aren't sexualized from her. Okay, so, okay. cause Dang. she's she's a great vocalist. I feel like she give a sex symbol too. She and that's that's okay. But if you finna give us an album, cause I think that's gonna be next for her. Is an album you gave us three singles. She might give us one more. I don't know, but I know that a project is probably gonna be coming soon. coming near in the near future. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. I think that I don't. I would like to be surprised with the project with seeing the other con, uh, uh, content. content that she can give us outside of sexual songs. Mm-hmm. I would like to be surprised. So okay, I'll wait for the project. But if you do give us a single again before that project, I would hope for it to be a love song, a ballad. Something different than this uh, hot mama music. <laughs> hot mama music. Yes, her videos has been good too. This surprise one though, it's been the most muted out of all the other two. I don't know if you watched the video. I haven't seen it. It's basically I just her video and a love interest down on the loving on each other. Uh, and it, but with it being a song about her, you know, putting that, mm-hmm. putting that, put that purr on them. Mm-hmm. I, I expected it to be very raunchy like the other two, and it wasn't. It was it was like it was a it, it was a smooth. grown raunchy out supposed right. for her, mm-hmm. so I appreciated that. Um, I don't need to see her being Beyonce in all her videos, but yeah, good. that was a smooth smooth uh, single. I will add it to my uh. Add it. I added it to my library. Playlist. That's the only thing that made it to my playlist this week. Now Chris Breezy did release, but we ain't got to that yet. I ain't. We ain't finished it. See, outside of the mainstream motherfuckers. It's two projects that I needed. I started to touch on, but I didn't finish. Westside Boogie, Who and is that? he's a, a a a rapper out of uh, L.A. He put out a project, and a lot of people That's that sad. did listen to it and consume it, they are saying it's giving a lyrical Kendrick Lamar album. Oh. And so, if you are not getting what you wanted out of Drake or something very lyrical, then go to that project. And then Ombre. She is a new up and coming, I would say R and B artist, mm-hmm. and she gave us an EP. I want to say, and I'm gonna check that out because I do like Ombre a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will, I would say you should listen to those two. So next I have week, no idea who those two or are, the next though. episode, we are gonna talk about those two because I don't want this to be like a mainstream ass project where we don't give people uh gems. Up and coming artists. Yes, because that's my favorite type of music is the up and coming, the low key. Okay. Okay, we can get into the up and coming. So, as of right now, <coughs> we got, we got, we gonna, we gonna wrap this music talk up. Yeah, but, but we got one more thing to talk about. What last night? The verses. <laughs> oh, Mario and Mario, bro. Ray J, little Sammy, and 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 Jeremiah. Yo, and... ask about little Sammy. <laughs> Tank. <laughs> little Sammy, I, that man is grown. Oh, he is Sammy. Sammy now. He is Sammy. Anyway, um, and who's the last person I'm missing? Bobby, Bobby Valentino. Valentino. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't see the introduction. I didn't. Yeah, see... I ain't watched too much of Ray J and Sammy. Yeah, but I, I saw. I heard it was it was, it was a bad. joke. Yeah, I heard it was an extreme I saw joke. A little clip. Of see, Ray J. I, I saw. Uh, Sammy live when he came to Chicago uh, with Eric Bellinger, mm-hmm. and he sound great. He 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 likes to flex that he really can sing. Mm-hmm. 
But the men's cannot dress. That man's fashion is butt. I don't know no songs by Lil Sammy. And that's 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 probably because his music is just What's the Lil Sammy song I should know? His name is Sammy now. It's just Sammy. Okay. Sammy, Lil Sammy. Big so, Sammy, small Sammy, short Sammy. He's definitely given us a couple projects throughout this time. Us? So when I was in college, I was listening to Sammy heavily. I was listening to uh, Tsunami is one of my favorite ones. That's a song? Or that's yes, a it's, a, it's, a, it's a song. How Awful project. Tsunami. Uh, dang. I, I, I hate being put on the spot it's to okay. sing It's song. okay. You don't got to sing it. I yeah. can't think of the lyrics. I'll be forgetting lyrics. I mean, let me. I, he Let's got... uh. It's a couple. I'm not even gonna do Sammy like that because, although I don't care for his latest stuff, I did like so tsunami better. Baby, you better. Mm. That song. I'm him. Uh, expiration date is cool. I don't know. I don't think I know no Sammy music, but I would. T- I would. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put you on to some Sammy songs because it's not great. It's not hit making R and B. Right. But it's, it's just good. solid. R and B, and that's probably why yeah, a lot of people don't probably don't know him over on our side of the of the states. I feel like he's a little older too. He like is older, older than what I, what I probably. No, he makes music for us. Oh well, I ain't, I ain't heard him. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm put you on, but yeah, Sammy and Ray J ass, they was jokes. So you got Omarion or you got Mario? No, Mario, um, um, uh, Mario got his ass smacked. Mario, I didn't expect this to happen how it did, but I should have, cause I know Mario. It's like Sammy. They flex about knowing how to really sing. Right, right. And they didn't, they don't, they never needed engineering help. Right. So, I mean, I guess yesterday kind of helped me realize that I didn't know that I knew so much, so many songs about Mario that I did. I Mm -hmm. thought I, I thought I was going to go into it being like, oh, you know, oh, Mario got a lot of hits. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Mario can dance, which he played into a lot yesterday Uh that he got the choreography down pack. Okay, we get it. Now the whole singing clowns coming out on the stage, the breathing, breathe. I'm like, I'm like, oh, Mario. Okay. We get it. Um, Mario can really sing. Yes. I don't recall. Now some of the songs that he sung, I was like, okay, I remember this. Like this is a hit. I love this. Uh-huh. Or whatever. It bring back like, it feel like old times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, damn, like I remember that it came out, but I did not expect, I guess I didn't know how much of an artist Mario actually is. Like, yeah. I didn't expect him to show up on, on Mario, like how he did. So. Yeah. That was cool. I, I definitely didn't. I definitely thought that Mario, uh, uh, Mario was going to whoop Mario ass with just hits. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about the singing shit, but I know I n- know that Mario can really sing. Yeah. Uh, I personally don't think that Mario's catalog stands next to Omarion's. Um you think Omarion's is better? Yeah, I think Omarion's uh, catalog is better than Mario's. Um, I personally really like loved Omarion growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, that that um, uh, was it. Oh, that old album is one of my favorite albums, uh, R and B albums. Uh, Omarion really fucking played himself. <laughs> he really disappointed the <laughs> fuck out of me. Cause if if, if, if it's one thing I'ma do. And sing the fuck out of some of Marion's songs and watch his videos. Now, Mario, both of them played a pivotal part in my upbringing. Mm-hmm. One, um, uh, Mario's uh, Let Me Love You song. Maybe you should let me love yeah. you. Uh, that shit, that song is one of the songs of my childhood because I would sing that song with my cousin, my favorite cousin, shout out Molly Ma. I would sing with him. We was like trying to act like we was a singing duo, but his ass couldn't really sing. So we would sing that song, I and that's the only song we would practice. Yes, so I was singing way higher than he would, and but uh, well, when you bring it together, it sound like one voice. Right. But it's really me carrying the fuck <laughs> out of him. <laughs> but let me love you was the only song we practiced, and so that was my shit. And then Omarion touch, oh, entourage. That shit was my shit. Oh. Touch was one of my favorite music videos of all time. I did not expect that shit to go how it was, but Mario was letting that nigga know he was losing every single song. He didn't let I that man. No, it was the music content is contenting. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's contenting. Mm-hmm. If that's the word, okay, I'm gonna say what I said. But 
That versus yesterday was just hilarious. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. And I'm I like hate they it. They did it live this time. Like, they did it, like, with an audience and stuff. Normally, they don't do that, right? Well, you didn't know that they still was doing verses. I didn't know I, that. I know that they still, I knew they were still doing verses. I just didn't check too much on them because it was a lot of rap stuff. And right, right, we, right. But yeah, they that's how it has been moving forward. They they bring you buy tickets, you go there, and they on stage, they'll be having like legends and artists in the building too if they bought tickets. They put on a real show now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but so like Amarion wasn't off by wanting to focus on production and theatrics, yeah, right, right. but he wanted too much of that and not enough of the hits. Okay. Yeah. And so Mario, you did your shit. <clears throat> but yeah. We're going to move on from music because yes, this is yes. not a, a solely a music podcast, right, right, but it was right. just so much music. So much. But yes, Juneteenth. Juneteenth just. Coming up. No. Right Come on now. Ah! Oh, sorry. You ain't never know. just fucking yell it did pass. into that microphone like that. I'm sorry. Was, <laughs> I, was I too loud? I'm you sorry. Were you? I'm sorry. It did I'm pass. sorry, You're listeners, right. if she just blurred. Oh, wow. just. You probably were for you to not know that June nineteenth just passed yeah. and it's what my, June twenty fourth. My ancestors are upset at me. They gonna beat your ass in your dreams tonight. <laughs> but yes, what are we celebrating? Um, let's get to it. So my understanding is that Juneteenth. So okay, this is my understanding of Juneteenth and why it's even a thing to begin with. Mm. That we had, you know, our peoples was enslaved. And they were freed, but nobody told the slaves they was free. So they're still working for the man, still work, 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 sweat, 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 sweat. You know, out there mm-hmm. doing what they do. I don't think we needed a visual depiction of that, but keep going. We can make it work like this. And the sweat, sweat, sweat. <laughs> That's from Wizard of Oz. Get into it. Oh, my bad. Um, <laughs> um but yeah. Uh, I was told that they were, the slaves were free, but this particular group of people that were in Texas, in Texas, yeah. didn't know that they were free yet. Yeah. So this celebrates the day that everybody all slavery knew. was ended. Um, like for sure, for sure. Like done. And that shit still wasn't over. They still was yeah. working them. They still is, but we still are being worked. We ain't gonna talk about that. Um, so do you think that that like when, when you really think about us having a national holiday now mm-hmm. and 2021 is when it I became mean, it's one federal, like people it's are federal. taking off work for this now. It's a federal holiday, not national. I don't think everybody around the world celebrated federal, federal yeah. holiday. Yeah. <sighs> That's crazy. What are we celebrating? We happy that we were. <laughs> Enslaved and no longer enslaved. What are we celebrating? I mean, okay, so I think I think what it is is that I think this is why we ended up celebrating. Remember that year Independence Day? We like boycotted Independence Day, Fourth mm. of July, mm-hmm. and so everybody was like, because this was around the time George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. This was during the pandemic when yeah. shit was really deep. Yeah, and so we all said, forget Fourth of July. We not celebrating. Don't ban no stuff for Fourth of July. Let's celebrate Juneteenth. Yeah. I think we was trying to make a statement. Yeah. Like saying like, you know, first of all, y'all wouldn't be making all this money on, on July 4th anyway if it wasn't for black culture because we the ones that be throwing the big ass cookouts with all the food, plates, cups, all that stuff that, that we be buying. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were celebrating really American history. Fourth of July is American history. That's mm-hmm. not our history. Yeah. So like, I think we was trying to make a statement to the country like, don't forget about us for one and two. We need to start digging deeper into our own history, our own lineage, and what it means to us and celebrate us because we didn't have a holiday. Like mm-hmm. Black Amer- Black Americans in America don't have a holiday. Besides what Martin Luther King Day or like that ain't no holiday. That's his day. It's his day. So like, what do we have? Everybody Black History Month, de Mayo, St. Patrick's Day, Black History Month. We have Black History Month. Um, I mean, I guess I feel like, I feel like black history month was very potent when I was in grammar school, uh-huh. but as I get older, I'm like, dang, it's February. So it's supposed to be like festivals throughout it. And yeah, like there's a whole Juneteenth parade and everything. So like, <sighs> you know how I feel about slavery. 
So, Maya, how do you feel about the holiday? What you got to say? <laughs> why, we, why we celebrate? Well, you know, I was the one that put on a big Juneteenth to get everybody to learn how to celebrate it, to just show a way to celebrate it. Mm-hmm. But now that I've done that and it's been a year, it's been two years? It's been two years. It's been two years since I put on that Juneteenth uh, potluck. I've been reflecting, you know, going on this spiritual healing journey. And I just feel as if it's weird as fuck to be celebrating, to be celebrating this as it's as if it's St. Patrick's day or Cinco de Mayo. Those are not days of pain too much as what Juneteenth is. Mm -hmm. Cause for one, we're not, we're still in bondage. We're not free. Mm -hmm. We are not, um, considered humans. Uh, we don't have a birthright here on paper Mm -hmm. and that's just another conversation, but I feel as if, uh, Juneteenth is cool. Y'all can celebrate it. We can all celebrate that moment of progress, Mm -hmm. but, um, in totality, that is not enough at all. Mm -hmm. We need actual change. And so I think that Juneteenth is just a distraction for us to not want to focus on how much more progress needs to happen, actual tangible progress. Mm-hmm. A holiday is not tangible. It's not real progress to me personally. Um, and is and if we're going to not, if we're going to boycott July 4th, I thought that would have probably been enough for us to see how powerful our pockets are. Yeah. And so I thought we would have probably kept going, mm-hmm. but obviously um, some things are just for show and just for the moment instead of it actually needing to be uh, progressive. <clears throat> but, yeah, Juneteenth is not it for me. I will celebrate and I'll go out and be amongst the masses, but I don't know if I want to put on big old things for Juneteenth anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just another regular day for me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I know it wasn't a regular day for my ancestors, and so I feel as if I still will partake in festivities. I just don't care to be the one to put on the stuff anymore. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel. That's wild as hell. That's crazy. Um, anyway. <laughs> I ain't never heard somebody's stomach talk to me. All right. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't know. I think it's weird that you have that perspective. Because yeah. my perspective on it is like, I mean, like. I get it. We have we have gone so far, but we still have a lot further to go. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, for me, it's like I appreciate every single small step that we make. Mm-hmm. And so, because years ago, these steps didn't exist. This stuff wasn't. And I get it. Like in the moment, like a few years ago, everybody was like, "Oh yeah, we partying for Juneteenth." I feel like. Maybe the meaning of it kind of got a little lost Mm -hmm. in the sauce. And, like, everybody just wanted to have a party. But, like, at the same time, I think it's still something to celebrate. I think it's still something to, you know, go out and say, you know, thank you to ourselves for still fighting, for still doing what we do, for still putting ourselves out there in front of CPD, even when they act a fool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just feel like. I feel like it's still needed to celebrate us, to celebrate our culture, to celebrate where we came from. Now, these companies that's trying to capitalize off of it. That's what I was trying to get to, too. Walmart. Man, this fucking Who can Walmart celebrate Juneteenth? Ice cream? Who can celebrate it? Because if we know what this is celebrating, what this came from, who, who can, can celebrate? celebrate it? I mean, I'm going to say anybody that's really like supporting the black people can celebrate. They don't say who can and cannot celebrate St. Patty's and Cinco de Mayo. Because we're not talking about the plight. You really just said whoever support black people. That's crazy that we are the only group that can say stuff like that. What you mean? Who, uh, who, uh, whoever can sell, whoever support us can celebrate it. People really don't support an existence of something that is similar to you. We're just a different shade. That's crazy. And that's, so, so you don't think they you don't think anybody should be able to support it? No, or anybody like I don't it? think you should be supporting an ethnicity. That's fucking 
well, <laughs> you should you should support humankind. Like it's weird. Oh, absolutely. But the reality is, is that, that people hybrid. don't. Absolutely. So that should be the conversation that that we still like. You could talk about progress, all this shit. There's still so many that don't absolutely. view us as human because absolutely. we're not really human on paper. Absolutely. That's what yeah. I think Juneteenth should be a moment of reflection. Not us to go get drunk and party and shit and absolutely. fireworks. I agree. We should be reflecting and probably make this be a very pivotal moment. Every Juneteenth, uh, uh, we should be out in the streets. Uh, we should be having initiatives. Something should change every Juneteenth. It day. should be more of a service thing. Yes, it a- should be more of a service. If you're going to talk about progress and all the small steps, why not make this be a uh, 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 a checkpoint every year, Juneteenth, This what, hap- what has happened for mm-hmm. us? And uh, if not, then we apply pressure even more pressure for more things to change and use June 19th as a checkpoint instead of as a holiday to shut us up and make us do the things that does not progress our communities. I could agree. <clears throat> That's I, how I, I feel agree about with it. You there. I mean, some people like to celebrate. Some people do. Um, I don't want to call it pop-up shops because that's not what it is, but like. That's wild as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I hope y'all can hear her stomach. <laughs> <laughs> on the mics, on the mics, bro. Her stomach. You can't hear it. That's oh, crazy. Um. Well, you you need to stop coming to shoot, and you're hungry. Okay, Tamaya. So Sometimes I don't feel like eating when I wake up. Anyway, okay, but some people have done like you know get together with small black businesses, and mm-hmm. they do like workshops, or I guess you could say pop up shops. That's not the word I want to use, but like. You know, where they get a bunch of small businesses together and then they kind of make like a boutique pop-up shop kind of thing and people go around, buy the different stuff or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that's cool. Like little yeah, workshops cool. and stuff like that. And um, I don't know. Maybe it shouldn't be like a, a party. Get drunk. I don't, Cinco de Mayo probably shouldn't be that either. because I don't think Cinco de Mayo, St. Pat- Patty's Day was meant for them to do that. I think we've made moved it forward that. to that to be yeah. that instead of actually celebrating heritage. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, that's that, that's my perspective on Juneteenth now. I hope everybody had a great. great yeah, I Juneteenth, hope you all so. still had a great Juneteenth. But let's really just focus on what matters because we tend to not want to care about what actually matters. Absolutely. absolutely. But yeah. Uh, speaking mo- of Juneteenth, spe- speaking of Black what people. actually matters, right. I saw an article pop up on uh, Facebook, and it was from BET. And then I dive a little bit more into it to see where they got the studies from. But uh, basically, there's a study that finds link between black hair products and breast cancer. So black hair for women mm-hmm. and breast cancer, they found a link between that. So I'm going to just give a little synopsis. Um, so we've heard about uh, uh, hair products being linked to issues and cancer being harmful to us. But after cancer, that's what I'm like, okay, I got to pay attention to what I put into my body. That's just a quote from this article. But basically, your research was done at the City of Hope. I don't know exactly what City of Hope is, but um, I'm, it's, a black, uh, it's a group of uh, black uh, researchers. Um, they study the effects of parabens, um, a popular ingredient in many black hair products. It's Parabens are in a lot of other shit, like deodorants and all that good shit, but it's not good for you. Uh, parabens and what what's that thing in deodorant um <sighs> aluminum aluminum mm-hmm. like shit like that <clears throat> we well we know now that that shit has is reasons why you have skin issues yeah, and pigmentation yeah. Issues yeah um and so black hair products the ones that aren't from actual black companies because we just now know that we have been consuming products from people that are not black making stuff for our hair mm-hmm. uh Many of those products, uh, on uh, they uh, have a lot of parabens in it, and we found that paraben have uh, and taking a, a bunch of parabens, uh, they contribute to uh, breast cancer or just cancers of any sorts. Um, and so, this study says a quote: "We saw increased cell growth in black breast cancer cell lines with the paraben treatment, but did not see the effects in the white breast cancer cell lines at the dose that we tested." So, if they tested more than just Black people, they've tested other uh, races to see if the same uh, amount of breast cancer cells are there. And they said that there is a difference. <clears throat> How do you feel about knowing a study like that 
and comparing it to how your personal experience has been with using hair products from what you were using to what you now use, how do you feel about that? Um, well, <clears throat> I think I'm speaking from a place that <clears throat> I'm, I don't want to call it privilege, but I'm speaking of a place that of lacking knowledge because I never got permed. Mm-hmm. My hair was never permed. Um, I've always been natural. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> shout out to my mama because she, I said, mom, I want a perm. I want a perm. All the kids got the perm. It's slick. <laughs> she was no, no, no. Cause my mom, my mom would get a perm all the time. Like uh-huh. Dan, you, you talk about perm every six weeks. She was on it like clockwork. You know what That's I'm saying? crazy. She ain't let you get one. No. Mm. She wouldn't let me get one. And um, I'm thankful for it now. But yeah. Back then, I, I I was like, damn, she ain't going to let me get no perm. I want to have my, you know what I'm saying? My kitchen slicked back. <laughs> but I was, I mean, but like, it's been studies on perm itself for yeah. years. For years. And black women still don't listen. They still get perm. But that's a, a, ta- a quick, tangible, visual depiction of it being harmful for you. Like, right. your edge is gone, nigga. Gone. I mean, <laughs> this this particular stuff like the the Cantu oils, the uh, the Doctor Miracle, right? That shit, and people use that like <laughs> Doctor Miracle was big when I was in like middle school, right? 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 It had us in the chokehold. Yeah, so the that's the trying to go their edges back from the perm taking it off. Uh huh. You don't really see the how slowly it's affecting. Your hair, your body. your body, all of that stuff. So it's, it's more slick than actual using relaxers and shit. I mean, I don't really know how to feel about it because, I mean, I use some of those same products. For a long time, I used Cantu. Um, now I use Shea Moisture. Mm. Uh, sometimes I use Carol's Daughter. But, like, even that product, Carol's Daughter, has been, like, I think it's been sold mm-hmm. to... Uh, company and that person no longer you know what company you know it was sold to white people oh of course of course Mm -hmm. um so like and then if we if we want to bring it like current this is not hair products but this is just an example of like a black product being sold and changed the formula being changed honey pot um a lot of black women women in general loved honey pot yeah now the formula has been changed and everybody's upset because it has sofas, parabens, all this stuff. Yep. Um, it's important to read your product. Yeah. On the back. I learned that going through my natural hair journey before I even locked. Like, it's important to read it. If it got all this stuff that sound like alcohol, it don't need to be in your hair. Uh-huh. The most natural stuff probably is like coconut oil, like uh-huh. water. And it has to be 100% pure. 100% pure. Yeah. So like... I guess it just all comes from knowledge. Like you just have to really, and same things that you eat and that you put in your body. Like you have to read the back of these labels. Like we're putting trash. Everything today can give you cancer. Yeah. Like people that are on serious vegan diets, soy, soy is like Mm -hmm. too much. Soy consumption can be bad for you. Too much of anything really is bad for you. But, like, everybody is like, oh, yeah, vegan, 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 vegan is the way to go. But, like, a lot of products, a lot of vegan products have soy. Yeah. So, like, are we really safe anywhere we go? I'm I'm, going to dive a little bit more into it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Back to the Juneteenth thing. Mm Mm-hmm. How we still are in bondage. Mm Mm-hmm. How we are not actual humans on paper. Mm Mm-hmm. This is just, this research, this article is just another example of how there's an attack on us to, to keep us the bottom of the social totem pole. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so you are putting affordable products in our communities for years, not just now, but like from the past generations to now generations you have been attacking us through our hair. And you know, that's extremely important to us. Mm -hmm. Um, Even now, I think our hair is more, the most important it might've been to our communities, black women and men, Mm -hmm. because men are wearing their hair much longer, not caring about uh, the certain standards that were there to be this upkept look. look. Um, And so 
you're targeting our hair products. Hell, uh, the only thing that have been our that has been our saving grace is because we are trying to educate ourselves and make things ourselves. And so right. these black owned hair care products, either you're going to be natural, or I would rather you stay with them. Do not buy hair care products from white companies or companies that are aren't of your uh, skin tone, your mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. your social group. Don't buy companies from them. They don't know nothing about our. They hair. They don't know nothing about our hair. For one, mm-hmm. for two, they hate our hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> literally literally <laughs> and and then for three it makes no fucking sense to keep buying it yeah um is why it, would you go black bad a three-in-one shampoo that's stupid for your hair you know that's gonna strip out you know goddamn well what a shampoo is for what conditioner is for you gonna get <laughs> one of them that have all of it in it right so yeah man it's everything has a deeper meaning to it you just gotta you know Stop looking at everything at surface level because there's no reason why. And there's it, it makes perfect sense why there's a larger rate of breast cancer in our people. But yeah. you have to ask yourself why. And when you find out why, I feel as if everything will always lead lead back to racism. Do you, do you think that part of it is like our fault for not educating ourselves? Of course. Yeah. It's a, we're always at fault. And like you can keep blaming the white man all you want, but with us being alive for so many years, going through all the shit that they went through and we didn't have to go through that shit. Mm -hmm. Our, uh, our bondage looks much different for, uh, for you to not want to do your just do and at least learn so that mistakes are not repeated. Right. Then that's your fault. Mm -hmm. Um, and like they are only going to keep doing what works. And so we have to not allow it to work anymore. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely our issue. uh, I really wish that, um, I get why people sell their products so that they can make, you know, a bigger profit and stuff like that yeah. and, you know, make money off of it for a lifetime or whatever the case may be. But, like, for the first time, speaking of sell, selling selling products, for the first time ever, I saw Honey Pot on the shelf, like a whole stack of it. Uh-huh. And this is after we've all found out that they've sold the company. Yeah. Prior to that, you could not find Honey Pot on the shelf. Yeah. You had to go online and purchase Honey Pot. Mm-hmm. And even still, you had to wait a long time because the products just might be sold out. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, we got Myel Organics, who is old, owned by a yeah. black woman. And that's out in Indiana, too. She just had to throw that in now. Mm-hmm. But we got that, who is owned by a black woman. I hope she never, yes. ever, ever, ever. I love ever. her products. I, I know a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. And they buy them in bulk. And they support her, like, yes. a lot. So I hope that she never sells her company, like, ever. Well, you also have to put in the fact that Honey Pot has gone through a pandemic, just like everybody it else. Has. And it so has. resources was probably slim to none. We yeah. didn't have tissue paper. We didn't have hand sanitizers. We have gas. That's crazy. We ran out of masks. We, babies don't have formula. It's so crazy. She, you can only imagine, imagine the resources, the lack of resources that she had to try to keep up with the demand. Million, billion, millions to billions of women bleed once a month, and so they need these products. And so if so many are trying to get her products, then she has to account for that demand. And I'm sure it just was too much. I'm not, I don't fault her for selling her company, uh, and I'm just grateful that there's other products out there that also uh, sell all-natural uh, hygiene products yeah. because I don't want to these things I would love to only buy black. So I buy from uh, uh, Jules uh, Padding. I think they changed their name to Rain Padding now. It's out uh, in McDonough, uh, Atlanta. And you have to get it either from a distributor that's in your area. So once you learn who those distributors are, you can just keep in contact with them and ask if they have the product that you want to buy and mm-hmm. just get it from them on hand. Or you can put it in order online and it'll choose those local distributors for you to then ship it to you. And so it, it doesn't take a long time for my stuff to get to me. It takes about like a week. Mm-hmm. And so you you know your your pat your period, your menstrual uh uh patterns and, patterns and routines yeah. and so just order your stuff accordingly. Mm-hmm. Honey pot was great and just move on to something different and cause I don't fault her for selling her company. Well, right. You know. But yeah. Dang. I mean I don't fault her for selling it either. It's just, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, wh- I mean, what do you sell it for? You sell it to get more money, and then like, 
I feel like the black I feel like black people was really like down for her. That's fine, but her product. but she 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 it's had she had a good like, she she put it out there. It may it, it, it financially liberated her in a way, and she felt like there was no need to continue to have this, and so some somebody else has to enter the market and then service us. If you want it, if you want more of honey pot type products, and you got to make your own honey pot type products, then that's just as simple as it is. Because white people do the same thing, Mexicans, whoever they have companies. And then they sell it off when they feel as if they no longer yeah, want to true. service that. That's true. So yeah, yeah. It's, it is what it is. You feel me? We, I was thinking about, cause you know, I'm a lover girl. I was thinking about, um, the whole statement. Uh, it was a waste of time. So that statement, I don't know if you hear that a lot when people like, uh, explain breakups to you, mm-hmm. but I, I always hear, when a breakup happens, whether it's relationship, a romantic relationship, platonic, family, it was a waste of my time. Mm-hmm. I never got that statement. And uh, if it actually was not a waste of your time, you just made a bad decision. Right. And so I think like every, I think that is like situational. Mm-hmm. You could say it was a waste of time. Most of the time, I think a lot of us saying a waste of time is us not taking accountability for our faults and why things didn't work out. What do you think about, do you need like an example for you to understand what I'm trying to say? No, go ahead. Okay, so what do you think about, like, it can't, are, can, can things ever be a waste of time if you enjoyed it? Like, if you had a good time with that person or with that job, w- w- whatever it was, mm-hmm. but it's still, you still had to end it. Do I think it's a waste of time? Yeah. No. Now, what if it wasn't the best time ever? where you felt like you could have been doing something else during that time, but you still chose to spend time with that particular uh, right. investment, I do suppose. I think, do I still think it's a waste of time? Yes. No. So and what I, is a waste of time when you talk about things that you had to end? I don't think nothing be a waste of time, for real. Mm-hmm. Like, um, like say, say you came into my life, we was cool friends or whatever, and then, like, the relationship ended. Uh-huh. I don't think that's a waste of time. I feel like everything coming to your life, you know, for a reason. Yeah. And even if it even if it turned out bad, like I feel like you still learn something or you know how to maneuver better so that you don't run into that situation again. Mm-hmm. Or like like say you was in a real bad relationship or something like that. I wouldn't say it's a waste of time. Uh-huh. You just know like okay, I know what red flags to look for next time. Or yeah. I know I know what I don't like for next time or Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't put myself in this situation or maybe I know how to be more vocal about the situation. So I don't end up in that same situation again. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think, I don't think nothing be a waste of time for real. I think what's a waste of time is when people go in the grocery store and they say they're going in for one thing and they come out with 15 things. That's a waste of time. <laughs> That's a waste of time. <laughs> Shout out to my mama. You got that bad. That's a waste of time. I mean, it was a waste of time where they just didn't know that they needed more time That's to do what they thought they came in to do. You wasted my time because I don't need to be in this store. <laughs> you do. That's a waste of time. But I don't, I don't think nothing that's like that comes in your path for a season or whatever. I don't think that's a waste of time. I agree. I, I, I always thought that it was just you not taking accountability for you making a decision that you no longer thought was the best decision you should have made. Now, people that get into relationships off like mm, how do I put this I've never been on a dating app before mm-hmm. but I know people that get into relationships off of dating apps and they be like mm, I don't know if I really like this person or mm, I don't know but we gonna try to make it work mm-hmm. that's a waste of time I feel like that's a waste of time cause why are you trying to make it work and you know you don't like them you know you're not fucking with them for real why would you try to make that work you're wasting your time and theirs you're, you're wasting your time most of the time people say that was a waste of time when you're not taking accountability for you are the one that wasted your own time. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And you wasted their time. Yes. Cause why the hell would you do that to them? Yes. Okay. What happened? Okay. Let's say that you wanted to date somebody mm-hmm. and you want us to be exclusive, right? Mm-hmm. And they not ready to be exclusive and they tell you this. And so you like, okay, cool. It's all right. I guess now it's not our time. And so you kill, you still keep going mm-hmm. with them, hoping that one day that they'll want to be exclusive. Mm-hmm. This person has been the same from when y'all first talked about it 
until another conversation, another conversation, they still, I'm not ready. I don't want to be exclusive. Mm-hmm. And so is he, is that a waste of your time if you finally say, give them an ultimatum and they say, no, nah, I still don't want to be a, I still don't want to be exclusive. And then you say, well, you wasted my time then. Is that a waste of time? No, you wasted your own time. You wasted your own time. You should have been dipped. You should have been dipped after the it, fifth nah, fourth nah. After the second nah. The second nah. I'm gone. I'm not going to keep wasting time. Okay. We, I mean, but at the same time, I can't rush their process. Either. Yes, yes. So, like, okay, if this is not working out right now, it's just not working out. Yeah. And we're just going to have to go out separate ways. Maybe we'll come back and figure Later. it out when you're ready or whatever. Yeah. That don't mean I'm going to be ready when your ass Yeah. Ready, but I mean, clearly we not clicking somewhere. Yeah. And I don't know. So we just going to have to either revisit this. And nine times out of ten, when a person keep, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want to be in a relationship. Okay, maybe they just, you know, going through a healing process or something. Okay, that's valid. But for people, niggas specifically, they be walking around here, I don't want to be in a relationship. That ain't for me. That ain't for me. Just say that's not the right girl for you and move on. Why is it hard to reject people or get out of situations that no longer serve you? What you mean? Like- so I personally feel like this too. Sometimes it's really hard to just tell somebody exactly how just you be feel. Honest. You can just be honest. And then sometimes it's harder said than done. So hypothetically you've been rocking with somebody for some time, right? Mm-hmm. And then let's say you want to, uh, you've been feeling as if you want something fresh, something new. And so maybe that is you want to invite somebody else into your relationship. Okay. That's a touchy situation. Absolutely. And you are, let's say you already feel like you know what the answer would be. So that's already one that's keeping you from wanting to be truthful and in your, mm-hmm. in your, uh, and ask them that. And then two, let's say that conversations is already being held and you never verbatim them ask the question. Let's say like your homie doing it. Mm-hmm. And she know, he know that your homie and them, they got that going on. And mm-hmm. she's saying, he's saying, oh, that can never be me. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. And so that's even more for you to never want to ask that question, right, but right, you right. still have that want mm-hmm. in you. And so, like, what do you do in that situation? You just going to have to do it. You're going to have to rip the Band-Aid off. And, and just ask. It. Because if I don't ask, then I'm going to be suppressing how I feel. I'm going to be suppressing what I want to do yeah. for the sake of being with you. Yeah. Now, some people do do that. Yeah. But me, I'm going to just have to ask. I'm going to just have to ask. I'm going to just have to ask. That I'm shit gonna... leads to breakups sometimes. And if we break up, I guess we was meant to break up. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, T. Perry. Okay. I'm, I mean, I what else, what else do you... You don't want to meet me halfway to the end. What would, what would be a halfway for something like that? To want to invite somebody else into y'all bedroom. Cause you could say no. <laughs> <laughs> you could be like, nah, I don't know about that. And then I'll be like, well, that's what I want. So what's middle ground for that? I think a lot of people would want to know the answer to that. Cause a lot of people probably out here doing it. Yeah. That, I mean, that or is, want to do it. They want to do it. And sometimes that leads them to cheating. Oh, God. Sometimes I just leave them being in a relationship that where they feel unfulfilled. So what would, what be, would be a mid, what would be a compromise for the both parties? And there there's could be a bunch of possibilities, Shit. but just what's swingers what's party. one? A swingers party? <laughs> a swing <laughs> So I you mean, get one night? You get one, one night. One night. Are maybe, you maybe are, maybe once a month? Are you gonna be indulging in a swingers party? Cause Me. you said that you ain't into that stuff. But since that's the middle ground and you said that, okay, we could do a party then, are you going to be indulging in that party or are you just going to be putting on the party? I don't know. I don't know. I guess. I guess. I, I don't want to indulge. Why I can't just let you go do what you're going to do? So you, hypothetically. So that's not middle ground? No, that's middle. I, I, I mean, it could be a middle ground. Right. But somebody else might not be willing Happy to have that. a party every month for your partner to get their shit off. And so what's the middle ground for somebody <laughs> where they, where it's solely just one person. Okay. They just want to bring one person to the relationship. And let's say, all right, I want to share this one person with you. I don't know. No middle ground for that. <laughs> like if, if, if you wanted to do it and I don't, I don't know. Mm. What can we do? I mean, I don't know. Is there a middle ground for that? We got to bring somebody on. 
We got to bring somebody to tell I mean, us. Maybe it's not a middle ground for that. Maybe the answer is just yes or no. Uh-huh. And if it's no, then, like, we oh, yeah. got to figure something else out. Yeah. Oh, right. Now my bunny's acting crazy. They really <sighs> ripping that water bunnies. bottle. They thirsty. They thirsty. Okay, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a let y'all drink after this. I yeah, I got to hold on. Yeah. I got two bunnies. Shout out Shorty, shout out Sugar. Actually, do not shout out Shorty. Shout out Sugar. Shorty Don't mean as fuck. Don't shout out neither one of them things. Sugar is cool. Don't shout out neither one of them Shorty things. is mean they as fuck. They don't like people. So I, I ain't like shouting out Shorty. And one time I slept the night over here, and they kept me up all night. They all just, night. They wanted you to do an all night. I could have put them. them outside the door and let them free. Pissing me off. Anyway. Well, uh, I want this podcast to be something where we turn a negative into a positive. This is supposed to be a very positive space. I think everything is a lesson. Everything uh, can be turned into a lesson. And so nobody should ever look at shit as an L. That's how I just view shit. I think I've never lost a day in my life. <clears throat> because I found a way to no longer let it happen. Because I, t- I found the lessons and things. That's crazy. And so, and so about it like that. Yeah. And so, like, on the podcast, I want that to sp- to just come out and everything we talk about, we find lessons and shit. Yeah. Um, so like Juneteenth, a huge fucking lesson right. for us to get to this point. Right. But the lesson is that so much more progress is needed to be done and we can no longer allow stuff that happened in the past to happen in the future. Right, right, right. Uh, what can you say out of, out of anything that you've gone through in your life where you feel like, you know, it was a big ass lesson. What was the lesson? What was the lesson? Yeah. I had to pick a lesson in my life. Hold on now. I'm kind of old. Um, Bro, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> a lesson in my life. Let me see. I don't know. You go first, G. I can't, I can't think of no lesson. Well, I was smacked with a bunch of lessons in just this matter of a year. Mm. Shit. I feel like you choosing yourself is such a hard thing to do. It's easier said than mm-hmm. done, mm-hmm. but it's extremely important. Like, you really got to lock in for mm-hmm. for real. And that couldn't, that, that could encompass cutting off close relationships, starting new relationships with new people. People that could even be your mama, your daddy, your cousins, mm-hmm. you got to cut them people off because if they no longer serve a purpose for where you're trying to go, mm-hmm. then you just got to probably let them go. Yeah. Um. So I learned, like, that's that's something that really is hard work, but you have to do that work for you to get to that point where you know you're going to be fully liberated and happy because even the people closest to you can really be the ones that bring you down. Mm-hmm. Um. And you definitely have to step away from the traditional outlook of life. So I went on an interview uh, with the church, right? And <clears throat> you know how my views are with religion and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That's uh, why I was surprised when you told me. I said, yeah, church? but I'm also a very mm-hmm. accepting person of wh- wherever you uh, come from. And so I thought that interviewing with the church was funny, but it still, <clears throat> it still is of me. Um, and so one thing that they, that we talked about was what were my, uh, wants uh, and needs out of a position, a job, wherever I'm going to work at. And so I told them having a life work balance instead of a work life balance is one, Mm -hmm. two, you paying me what I want instead of what you think, uh, you want to pay, which is more so probably less than, and then three, uh, me just being comfortable and not being, not ever coming to work and feeling as, yeah. as if it's a drag or it's boring. Like you'll have some days, but that shouldn't be every, every day. day. Right. And so the, the, the pastors, they basically took, uh, the first lady, she responded and she was like, you all in your new age, y'all are very different. <laughs> y'all are very different. Mm-hmm. And she explaining like how all the time. their traditional ways is what's right to them. And it's just, will take them time to like slowly accept it to be, uh, maybe right or just another outlook at life and work. Uh, but they're open to it. It's just, they need, they still are just getting to it. And so I was like, that that's great, but let's really dive into uh, the stuff that 
the younger generation are saying should be the standard now. Mm -hmm. A life work balance. That's real. Why and who ever said you should work five days out the week? We only have seven. You're working more than half of the week for one. And you're working for 40 hours out the week. And so that means eight hours out of your day, you're working for somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, and you already sleep for at least eight hours. Mm -hmm. So that's 16 hours out of 24 hours. That's taken away from you doing things where one, you're not a lot, uh, you're not uh, up and functional. And then one, you're away being functional for something else that doesn't serve your actual right. sectors of being human. Mm -hmm. And then though that, what is that? Uh, eight more hours left that you have to yourself. Hypothetically, you have children, you have other, uh, passions, responsibilities. You work a nine to five banks close at five businesses close at five. And so if I get off at five, I have no other things that I can take care of Absolutely. through the weekdays. Businesses are not open on the weekends. Yep. And so it never made sense for you all to have us work nine to fives, which is just the typical and still think that we can have a progressive life to, to touch other things, other responsibilities. That's not working for you never made sense to me. And so for you to say, we just need time to change and be like you all. That's crazy. Cause you have been struggling your whole life, trying to fit a life inside a life that does not allow you to fit in it. Yeah. And so we're saying, Hey, we're doing a bare minimum. Hey, what's been going on. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. All you got to wake up and say like, damn, it don't make sense. Maybe it don't. Right. Maybe it don't. But the older generation be so stuck in their way. It's crazy. It's the right way to go. So, yeah. Work li a life work balance, just choosing yourself is just a lesson I really had to learn and actively do every day. So I think for me and what's kind of what kind of stuck out about your story is like, you know, you applied to work at a church. Yeah. I don't know what the position is. I'm assuming it got something. It was graphic design. design. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Um, and even though you're going to be working at a church, I know that you're very strong headed. And you will not let people's like views impose on what you believe in. Yeah. And so I say that to say that I, I the, the lesson I probably learned in like this year is like just staying true to yourself. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like influences from like friends, media, um, what's cool to do, what's in. I feel like I've been living this my whole life. Like a lot, if you talk to like a lot of my friends or like, you know, people that I've met along the way, they will all probably say like, I'm always like the mama of the group. Mm -hmm. or like somebody that's always giving some sort of direction and like making sure that do what the hell you need to do. Cause you, know you are, saying? I mean, and I might be, but that's uh -huh. my truth. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. my truth. And I live in that and I don't let nobody change that about me. And like, you know, a lot of my friends are into things that I don't really care to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that I look down on them for doing it. Maybe sometimes I do, but that's what the hell are y'all doing? Get the fuck out of church. That's not the point. Stop doing that shit. Okay. Um, it's not that I look down on them in a the sense of like, you're a terrible person. Like, what are you doing? But like, I really just want the best for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so that's like my nature to just be like, you need to get it together. Yeah. Like I've always been that person. That's like, I don't change regardless. I don't change regardless. If you want to sit here on this couch and do whatever you want to do, I'm still going to be me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. I just, Stay true to yourself is very, it's a very, very valuable lesson because can't nobody break you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's kind of where, where I'm at right now. Just staying true to myself, being real with myself in a sense of like, okay, do I really want to do this with my friends or do I want to stay the fuck at home? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like not letting nobody pressure me into doing something that I really just genuinely don't want to do. Yeah. So like, and it's hard sometimes. Cause it's you know, hard. It's definitely harder to say than done. It's hard because you know if your friends be gone, girl, why you don't wanna? And then picking and choosing who you call a friend, like that's a big, 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 big lesson that I've learned. Like, we 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 gonna get into that next episode. Yeah. Talk about friendships. We are gonna get yeah. into that. That's deep. Yeah. Cause you meet a lot of people. You meet a lot of people. Yeah. Yo, we gonna get into that next episode. Yep. So that means y'all gotta stay tuned. Stay okay. Tuned. And it's crazy that you say that because I've been writing a song and I'm going to show it to you after this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I wrote a... It's, it's about like staying true to yourself and choosing yourself first. Uh -huh. And I've never written something like this before. Mm -hmm. And I and I think it's the best song I've ever written. So uh -huh. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of the other shit. Period. 
But yeah, I'm. Thank you all for tuning in for the first episode. Yes, it's only gonna get better from here. So I just really want y'all to rock with us as we put more into the episode. Yes. We're gonna have more than just episodes. We're gonna have skits. Uh, yeah. fucking. I got an acting background, so get into it. <laughs> make sure you all. <laughs> make sure you all follow us on all our social medias. We're gonna be using that very heavily. We we really want you all to feel connected. We're gonna be doing a bunch. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube. We're gonna have this on YouTube. We're gonna I'm try gonna to like put this on like that. all the po- uh, podcast mediums, Apple Music, Spotify. So just you know, pick whatever your favorite uh, service provider is, and just keep rock with us. Yeah, for sure. Thank Bye, you. y'all. Bye. Peace. Just watch the damn podcast. <laughs>